Yeah. I guess we can get started. Okay. Um, I want to welcome everybody to our first Artist in the Studio series. Um, we decided to start this um, mainly because we now have the option of doing uh, Zoom events, um, but we wanted to make sure that our artists that um, aren't necessarily exhibiting at the moment still have a way to reach out to people and show what they're working on for their next upcoming show. So we um, are happy that Mary's uh, our first artist to do this series and she'll be showing some of the works that she will be exhibiting in her upcoming exhibition, which will be next month. And she'll also discuss her studio practice and we get to see her space and um, hear more about what inspires her and her work. So thanks, Mary. Yeah, well, thank you, Tina and Mike. Thank you very much for uh, letting me do this. This is a great opportunity, plus, uh, always, as always, exhibiting in the gallery. So I'm looking forward to that as well in November. Um, I guess a little about the space uh, I'm in and it, the where I live has a lot to do with my work. Um, in like the top floor of what was a wagon house on an old farm. Um, I can span around a little so you can see the face. Uh, this is, let me know if this is too choppy. Um, so that's, and then this way. So when we moved here, I guess 22 years ago, it was, um, it needed a lot of work. It was actually falling down. So um, we did hire a company to do a restoration. Um, the farm itself was split up into three lots many, many years ago. Um, I don't know if you want me to share that PowerPoint. Can I? Uh, so this, um, the building I'm in is actually, this is the wagon house. Um, this barn here was also part of the farm and is now my neighbor's home. They, uh, re they bought this many, way before we were here and redeveloped the whole thing inside themselves. Um, and the farm itself was owned by the Deweese family. Uh, and this is what it looked like in the 1930s, my husband had scanned all of these photos um, from our neighbor, Jake Dewey. So this is the wagon house itself. That's what it looked like when we moved here. Uh, we used an, a historic renovation company that um, was had a lot of um, experience with redoing old barns out in this area in Lancaster County. Uh, they took all the old wood off and salvaged it and then worked on putting it back together on the barn. Um, that's just an old neighborhood shot <laughs> from the 30s. Uh, um, so that's actually it, with what they did with a wagon house, the wagons would go underneath, throw the corn on the top floor for steer and cattle, and it would be stored here. So where I am is actually where all the corn or whatever they were using um, would be stored up here, hay or corn. So it was a lot of work um, to get that redone. It, the rest of the house, I mean, moving out here at that time was, it was a, definitely a good move uh, to, for the amount of space we would get. Um, and then this is John who worked on the property. He was a master carpenter. Um, and then this is the studio today. The downstairs really is just unfinished space with uh, space for a garage, for a car, or our lawnmowers mostly. Um, possibly we would take it a little further, but uh, we haven't done that. Right. And this was Jake Dewey's, who owned the farm for over a hundred years. Um, my neighbor's uh, home is 150 years old next year. So um, a lot of this, this immediate area definitely infused with all my work. I use it all the time in my work. So, right. 
am I still sharing or I was just trying to, can you see my screen now? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> I, um, so I could talk a little about the work that's right here um, in front of me. I think uh, the three of these here more or less go together. Um, I do work, I work in two ways. I work from photographs sometimes where I see scenes and I want to take that photograph and make a painting from it, or I work on site, or sometimes a combination of the two. Um, this piece in front of me, which is um, both to the other side of the lake, was from, can you see that okay? Uh, was from a, some photographs I took at Marsh Creek State Park, where I, which I use a lot. Uh, that was probably painted like, probably right at the beginning of the shutdown. So for me, it had a lot to do with the shutdown. Um, I think uh, when, with the center there, the photo itself wasn't that dramatic as far as a sunset goes. But what I was, I think my thought when I was painting this was that uh, we were entering something that, you know, we just did not know what the ending would look like or what would happen down the road. Uh, so it was, probably a more emotional painting for me than uh, uh, many of the others. And, and then this one here. And can you see that? That's also Marsh Creek State Park and I painted this one before uh, the other. And that has a lot to do, a lot of my work will have, uh, I get into the reflections in the sky and the reflections in the water. Um, I paint primarily with acrylics on canvas or on board. Usually I use, uh, I've used clay board, gesso board. Um, I'm using some birch panels now. Uh, but I, I start usually with a ground of a, a color, whatever color is coming through the sky or what is lighting the background is uh, my main focus to start. Um, and then usually if I work from photographs, I tend to use my imagination a little more when I come back. Um, my plein air paintings tend to be more on scene and in the moment, I think. Um, so these, I think, um, were more about the abstract compositions, uh, just getting into the colors in the sky and you know more imaginative I think than some of my others. So that's a little about those. Um, I did what I learned with oil paints at the academy and uh, later switched to acrylics. Um, I worked figuratively at the academy for a most of my time in school, uh, switched to doing more abstract compositions with um, uh, geometric abstraction. Uh, then uh, when we moved here, I was really struck with the abstract properties of the landscape. Um, so started really getting into more of that. Um, most, and that's really, I've been doing that now for probably another 20, almost 20 years, which I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, but yeah, that's my time with that. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how fast it goes. So, um, so those two, I think, and then the new one that I'm working on up here, I wouldn't say I somewhat work in a series, but I tend to jump around in a series. I wouldn't say I go, okay, I'm gonna do this five paintings all just like this. I may do two or three, and then I come back to a theme again. Um, so with that one that's on the easel, I, can you see that or should I pull that down? You can see it. Um, that one, what struck me about that, it was the back of my neighbor's house. And my first focal point was that the kids or the teenagers there that lived with my uh, neighbor had put out chairs and they made a whole sitting area on the back of this little shed that held wood. So my first, I was just really intrigued by how they did this and made a little deck and this like great sitting spot on the hill. Um, so that's what I want to call the painting is the sitting spot, but then there's this really dramatic sky in the background. So um, it, it was from a series of walks and photographs. So I do a lot of that 
as well. Like I'll take a whole series of things and sometimes put elements together. Um, and then again, with that, I'll tone my canvas with like a, a usually the brightest color that I see through the clouds or the base um, brightness. So that comes through and then paint over that with uh, the sky, uh, the rest of the sky and all. I, I like to use large geometric shapes in my work as well. Um, so I, I do uh, that as well with many of my pieces. Um, let's see. And, okay, so then I also do a lot of painting outside or this past year. I think I've done even more the pandemic. And so can you see that one? Okay, yeah. Um, and so that one was on the hill, like right in back of our house. And uh, there's these thistle weeds that have been growing there that um, the really bright whites um, kind of glowed in, in the evening. Um, I also liked the way they were kind of all crowded together. <laughs> so again, it was something I was thinking about painting for a long time. I just kept looking at it and saying, I gotta paint those thistles <laughs> before they go away. I told my husband, don't mow those down yet. Um, he had planted tomatoes in the middle so that the deer couldn't get the tomatoes, <laughs> which was really, um, when you would pick the tomatoes, they'd come out really fuzzy. Um, it was kind of funny that way, the way he did that. He's like, they're not gonna get them here. But um, I did, so that was probably a few nights, a couple nights, and then the sky changed a couple times um, when I was doing that. Um, so I do sometimes run into that where you might have two nights where things are relatively the same, but you have to get a lot done. Uh, usually when I'm painting outside, it's very quickly. So it is more reactive. Um, I think, I, I guess I would say in the pandemic, during this pandemic, I have found a deeper appreciation for what's in front of me <laughs> or what I wanted to work on and, a, and, and sometimes a great relief just being outside uh, to do some painting um, either right nearby or um, at Marsh Creek. I do some at Marsh Creek State Park as well. Um, so that that would be one example of a um, plein air landscape and then this as well. This was actually painted in, can you see that? That was painted in 2019 in an August afternoon. Um, so I did that. That was a couple afternoons at the bottom of the hill. Um, I still keep thinking I want to go back and do something to the roofs, but <laughs> I should probably start leaving it alone soon since the, the show is coming up. Um, but I do that as well. I've, I have come back to things like maybe I start something and then I will later come back to that even weeks, sometimes a year later uh, to finish something. Um, so that, and this one, I think I painted over another painting as well too when I did this one because I wasn't happy with the last one. Uh, so that's, uh, that is also a plein air painting. Um, a couple, This one is um, for Scythia, and uh, this one is a view from the back, and this I painted at the end of March. Uh, the the for Scythia were just coming out, so they were beautiful, and I've always wanted to paint them. Um, and then uh, the hickory tree, that's a shagbark hickory tree that um, was, that I use a lot in my subject matters. Um, I love in the evening, it kind of, it separates the sky like stained glass. Um, in the summer, it gets very leafy. Sometimes it's too meant, too leafy for me to feel like I want to paint. I love branches like that, how they um, break everything up. So I really love um, how branches, usually when they're either just starting to bloom or um, when everything is falling off in the winter, like or late October. 
So that's, that's a subject that I wanted to paint um, for quite a while. <laughs> and then I finally got around to that one. So um, let's see. Um, this one, uh, this would be another one that I'd call a pandemic painting. I think this and boats to the other side, uh, to me, had kind of my own feelings about them or symbolism, just how I was feeling about it. Although this one, um, so that's a, our porch, which the Deweese family who lived next door had built that on like when they lived in the house years ago. Um, it looks like it should be an enclosed porch, but it's actually open and it has a regular window. So for a while I've been looking at that thinking I really wanted to paint through the window or paint the scenes. Sometimes at night it's really interesting. Um, so, but when I saw it, my husband had left this sky there, um, which he uses to cut down weeds. <laughs> Normally when I see that I don't like it. I'm like, I want to get that off the porch or I want to put it away uh, because it does, it's a very big short tool. <laughs> so, um, I think though when I saw it sitting there, it to me it almost had that symbol of it being very, I mean it it's definitely has those connotations of being a grim, a grim rebirth, you know, that whole thing. So then I, I think what I was thinking is that um, you know, we have all this beauty around us, but everything was very sad. I mean, when you're listening to the news and the statistics and things like that. So that became um, a symbol for me with that. Um, but I was, uh, you know, excited to paint this one because I finally uh, had us use that subject that I was thinking of for a while. Um, so let's see. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, again, I, I will do usually an underpainting, um, paint you know, with whatever color I think is in the background and then um, gradually build up. I use layers of color. Um, I, when I'm painting inside, um, my palette's always up here. I paint up here so that I don't there's a very big beam in the middle that I don't usually want to run into because I've hit my head on that before. Uh, so yeah, we I'll always work up here. So I, I mean, I can show you a little of what that looks like up here. Um, it's just, um, I use a big, palette table. Uh, I've had this for years. I think when they, when they, we refinished this, the sawhorses and the palette table were already here. So I just left them here. Um, I work mostly with golden acrylics. Um, some Sennelier, I like the open acrylics a lot because they, um, they will stay wet longer. Um, but I do have to be careful with them um, because sometimes you'll, start them and then um, if they're not completely dry you can start pulling them off. Um, so I have a few more. Let's see this one here. Um, so I've been, I don't know, you can't really see this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I started using these ellipses. Um, I did these at Marsh Creek State Park. Um, I have a couple of these as well, this one. This, this is, um, we, get, we see a lot of hot air balloons in the sky. So that was um, uh, balloons in the sky. <laughs> And then this one is right next to the water at Marsh Creek State Park. So that was, uh, that was they were nice days this year. Um, let's 
Uh, we're doing a few more night paintings. Uh, this one um, is Hunter's Moon. Um, so I've been doing more of the moon paintings in the evening. Uh, this, uh, this, you know, it was a quick evening painting. <laughs> and then, I don't know. This was, um, I, I painted this on the full moon and the 4th of July. Uh, so I, I think a lot of neighborhoods were having fireworks in the distance. We didn't have a town that had fireworks, but uh, they were, you know, you were able to see them. So I just spent the e most of the evening outside painting and then I finished this in the studio. So I do that as well with uh, plein air paintings. I'll bring them into the studio later uh, to finish them, uh, think about them a little more. Um, I was having fun with some of these uh, longer birch panels. So this was just another one. It's really just a horizon. I don't know if you can see. So, um, and this one, so again, I get very into more or less the abstract color fields um, and those kinds of compositions for some of this work, um, quite a bit of the work actually. So, yeah, so I'm excited about the show coming up and Um, this is one from uh, last fall, actually. So, um, but one I'm hoping to get a few more before uh, the leaves start changing or falling. So, yeah, and then another for Marsh Creek State Park as well. This was also outside by the water. Um, the same week that I was painting some of the others. Yeah, so as I said, many of the area itself that I live in does tend to give me a lot of ideas and a lot of um, inspiration for where I'm painting. I think the, like the, the barn next door, uh, the smokehouse, uh, the fields, you know, I've, I've spent a lot more time outside painting this year, I, I think, than the previous, um, but I still spend a lot of time in the studio. Uh, I look at, uh, I've been, last year for the class that I was teaching at um, University City Arts League, I started looking more at, um, I was bringing in books for Emily Carr, who I found very interesting um, as a landscape painter, someone I hadn't seen before. Uh, Jane Freiliger, of course, I love her work. Um, uh, many, there's many teachers at the academy as well that uh, have influenced me over the years. Uh, so I think, you know, or the teach, uh, just being at the academy was a big influence on me. So are there any questions? Hi, Mary, I have a question. Sure. How you doing? Good. <laughs> I, I'm teaching uh, an oil and acrylic oh, class. Cheryl, how are you? I didn't know you were here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching an oil and acrylic class right now. Uh -huh. And uh, my students mostly use acrylics. Okay. And uh, we're going to be foraying over into oils, at least in a, in the instructor will, so that they get that piece. But they, they really like the, the uh, fact that acrylics don't smell. However, I'm yeah. sure that they're buying the least expensive acrylics that they can get their hands on. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious to know what brand you prefer and if you use a medium. I don't use medium much. I, I do occasionally, and I did bring it in for my students at UCAL to try. Um, the brands I like 
are from Golden. They also have some, I think they have some starter sets as well. Okay. Um, some of, and I used to sometimes, I would bring in my own paints to supplement. Like say somebody got stuck on a color. I was like, okay, wait, I think I can help you here with this. Because the nice thing, the wonderful thing about UCAL is that they supplied paints to their students and canvases. Uh, so that part was great. But I would, you know, maybe just if they needed a color or something, bring something in. But I think golden is, you know, right now my favorite. Uh, they have the open colors, but they may be a little bit tough for beginners because the open colors will they'll stay dry longer, or I'm sorry, wet longer, but uh, they can also be a little bit harder to manipulate. But they have some nice sets, I think, for students. So I, I would start with Golden. Okay, thank you. Liquitex may have some too, but I think Golden. Um, as far as the mediums, you know, they could maybe use a basic matte medium um, but you don't need I, I mean I don't use the mediums I, I did just try a glass bead gel just to experiment with that a little bit but that's not something you necessarily want them to do unless they're doing more abstract paintings um, it gives it's almost like it'll give it a little bit so your color a little bit more sparkle uh, not even sparkle but you can use it also like I've used it um, on a road or I, I was actually trying it on the wall uh, because it was like a stucco feeling almost. So Golden has a lot of different, they have a lot of uh, teaching tools too, I think, if you look on their site. Okay, that's, that's what I would go with. Mary, I haven't worked in acrylic for a long time. Does it still dry a shade darker than it? It does definitely change. Like I will do work on a painting, and it, I don't think it's as the way they used to be. They're, they've come a long way. Sennelier um, and also Golden, they make really nice colors, and also they stay. Liquitex can be good as well, but I got away from Liquitex because um, I used to feel like their acrylics were too rubbery or matte or something. Like it was um, but they do, the color does change some. So I'll work on the painting, come back, and then look at it again to say, okay, what's changed in this? Or that's not what I thought it was yesterday. So even if I feel like I'm almost done, I'm always, always going back to look at it again to see if I need to change the color back to what I was trying to get to in the first place. But yeah, they, they do change. So that's, it's interesting that they, they do that, but and I'm not sure what properties make them do that. But. It'd be aggravating too, like if you're doing, especially if you're doing like a portrait. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, I, I think the more you work with them, then you learn what right. color that you might come up with. I don't think with Golden and Sennelier, I don't think they, do that as dramatically. They've definitely come a long way, acrylics, um, from when I first started or knew them. I think when I was at the academy, you, you really didn't go much near acrylics paints. I didn't know, I don't know if I, maybe there was one person that I knew was using them, but I don't remember. Um, I would say learning with oils, I think, probably is better um, in some sense because you do learn more mixing and things like that. But that might just be my own experience because of being at the academy and that's how I learned and most of the teachers that were teaching painting were teaching that. Um, with students I had at the Arts League, I was always really very surprised at how quickly they, I mean, some I think also had some experience, but they seemed to pick up very quickly on using the acrylics. Um, and they- Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I, I think that they're, they were trying to stay with acrylics because they had young students in their class mm -hmm. or, you know, they had the after school program, so they didn't want the smell of the oils. Um, but plus, I, I mean, they, I think I was asked to teach because I was painting with acrylics too, so, um, but it was a very nice experience teaching there. Can you speak a little bit about your influences or other artists that you look at or yeah um i i think when i was in the academy uh, definitely many of the 
and I, I would say when I went to the first student show and decided to transfer there, because I knew I, I wanted to be a painter, there were some very good painters at PCA. Um, many of them were in the illustration department, but they were incredible. Um, but I think just seeing some of the students that were probably in their third or fourth year, seeing their shows there, uh, the instructors, I was just very taken aback by all of the work that was being done there that it seemed like it, all of the focus was on um, sculpture and painting. Um, so I had a lot of, I think all of, any of the instructors I had there, I'd say I uh, had an influence in a different way. I didn't paint landscapes at the academy, um, but uh, you know, Lewis Sloan was, I loved his work and he was a wonderful critic. Um, and Elizabeth Osborne as well was amazing work. Uh, Jimmy Luters, Roswell Widener, really. So there was definitely the Academy changed my life um, as far as being an artist. Um, and I loved um, being there. Um, I looked at it later, started looking at a lot more abstract painters, um, Mark Rothko, um, Frank Stella, uh, Elizabeth Murray, Murray I always liked to a lot when I was doing more of the shaped canvases um, because she wasn't as, I guess, geometric she was her there were a lot of forms in her uh shaped paintings and things like that so she was she was very interesting to me as well um and then recently i think with landscape painters um i love you know david hockney's landscapes uh jane freilicher uh i mean there's so many uh to look at that I find really interesting, but I always feel like I bring back some of the abstract kind of work that I was doing um, with larger shapes and color fields and things like that. So, yeah. So, trying to think if I haven't uh, anything, any other questions or? Um, do you, when you're starting out with your painting, do you do thumbnails first or? Do you just kind of dive right in and do you um, start out with paint or do you start out with maybe charcoal? How do you? I, I never use charcoal. Um, I, have, I have done thumbnails and sometimes in the past I've done smaller paintings first. I'm starting to think I might want to go back to that some, um, but most of the time I dive right in. I may do a sketch, uh, a sketch it out. I will tone my canvas in, in advance, um, but I will probably sketch out occasionally in a sketchbook, but most of the time I'm sketching it out on the canvas itself after I tone it. Um, yeah, I think the one painting porch view, that one I did do a lot of sketches for. And so I think, well, the one thing with landscape is I think you can, when you're outside, you can't, you are diving right in. Um, I know Cheryl, you do a lot of plein air landscapes as well, right? So you, probably do the same where you're diving right in, I think, mostly, right? Yeah, because you have the aspect of the sun is moving, so the shadows are moving, and the yeah. colors are changing. So, yeah, I lock in pretty early. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it's, I think that's usually the difference. Um, if I'm doing an outdoor painting where I want to get it done, you know, in a shot um, or in a couple of days, I'm usually diving right in um, for the Others that are studio paintings, I may do a thumbnail first mm -hmm. uh, or a small, or even a small painting. I have done small ones in the past. Um, sometimes one will lead to another, like say I do a small one and it might lead to a, another idea as well. But I, I work much more directly than I used to. I did use, I used to do more planning ahead, so. So I think there's advantages to both. I think with plein air landscape, what I love is just the being in the moment outside, and the, especially this year. <laughs> so it's more, even more so. so um, not sure questions? I do have one more question. Um, you have different shaped canvases there, and this week we went over composition. And one of the things I talked about was the challenge of painting in a circle or an oval as opposed to a rectangle. Do you right. find it challenging? Um, well, depending on the subject matter, I think it would be for these. I, like I saw these little ellipses on, um, I think, Trapel. 
that carries these. If you ever want to look at a, another site for surfaces, they, they have all different shapes and things. So I think when I was looking, I wanted to use these for kind of a sky view. So I think where you have maybe a lot of a long horizon or a lot of sky, I think these are not too challenging. But for other things, yes, I think they would be if you were just trying to do, um, you know, maybe a road, the road or something, some homes on this. But I think as far as something for looking at the sky or a piece of landscape or something, then, then I think they work out pretty well. It's not, I didn't find these too challenging. I, I find them interesting. I mean, when I used to work on shaped canvases, I usually thought in advance of what my composition was and then made the composition or um, cut those out, cut the stretcher bars or cut the wood to the shape I wanted, but I would draw it all out in the beginning. But round ones, yeah, I think they can be, the ellipse, not as much as maybe a round one would be. I've, I've done a few rounds and I think, again, it's like you want to know what you're going to do if the composition itself or the subject matter lends itself to a round shape. So that's... Yeah, so I <laughs> have to move on to the next piece and then get ready for the show. I'm going to be doing some framing and things. Um, well, that's great, Mary. Thank you so much. Um, you. <laughs> were there any final questions? Thank you <laughs> for coming. I really appreciate it and for the chance to... <laughs> I just want to make a note that Mary's show will be on view November 11th through December 6th. So we look forward to seeing it all. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Bye. Bye, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I didn't know you were here. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.